So cybersecurity is one of the most important industries nowadays as our societies are more technologically dependent than ever before. As cyber attacks are increasing in scale and severity, there is an increased skill shortage and demand for cybersecurity professionals. But in this skill shortage, there is an even bigger and more troubling issue, the lack of diversity in cybersecurity. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anna Sarin. I'm a cybersecurity officer within the European Union Agency for Cybersecurity. And the aim of this podcast today is to raise awareness in the importance of promoting the female role in cybersecurity. So today we invited female experts to talk about their experience in cybersecurity. We have with us Athena Burga, an ISAS uh, Data Protection Officer, and Renate Verheyen, who guides cybersecurity certification teams and their ad hoc working groups that develop NEU cybersecurity certification frameworks. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Anna. Good morning. So, how did you become involved with cybersecurity? Can you briefly share your personal story and experience? Yes, of course I can. Uh, thank you, Anna, for for your introduction. Um, I um, actually uh, started my career um, after studying international law and European law, and I worked in the field uh, of HR consultancy as a, at a big firm for nine years. After that, I um, I switched to uh, work at a large hospital and became strategic advisor of the board of directors at that hospital. And actually, that was in a time where digitalization more or less came to arise. The central question at that time was actually how to protect all this data that a hospital collects. Uh, talking about patient data, uh, personal data, um, but also trade secret data uh, became a real topic at that time. And that is actually um, how I um, um, rolled into the role of cybersecurity. I specialized in business law, um, but and, and also got certified on um, information protection um, and obtained two um, certification in personal data uh, protection. Um, and made a step to uh, dive um, and learn more um, about cyber law. And this is actually how I um, entered into my role as um, cybersecurity advisor, which became a true passion. What about you, Athena? How, how did you get involved in, uh, in cybersecurity? Well, it is uh, interesting that you mentioned the, the health sector, Renate, as it was the trigger also for me. Um, my background is uh, electrical and computer engineering. I was conducting my PhD thesis uh, at the biomedical engineering laboratory at that time. And uh, one of the most imminent and prominent uh, questions that, um, that really struck me was about the security of the data, of this information. How do we protect it, especially when it is transmitted through electronic networks, when it is processed in electronic applications at that time, it was becoming more and more advanced, all this area. So I became very interested into this angle and actually turned my whole research perspective towards information security at that time. And some years later, I actually used this experience when I joined the Greek Data Protection Authority as an IT security expert with the ultimate goal to protect individuals' privacy, so to use security for privacy and data protection. And this was really the moment that security and data protection became a true and I would say permanent passion for me. Okay, that's amazing. Um, thank you so much, both of you, for sharing your background and how you became involved with the sector. It is indeed very interesting to see how different backgrounds, uh, mindsets and experiences converge and can actually benefit um, the cybersecurity sector. Um, which aspects of the work do you find uh, most appealing, Renate? Um, what, what I think is really appealing is that uh, cybersecurity is integrated in all aspects of our lives, uh, of our businesses and our environment where we live in. So everything we do is actually digitalized and connected now, now these days. So this brings cybersecurity actually to the very center of all that we care about. So nature, economy, society, even including love and charity. Um, politics, space, and military environment. So therefore, um, it is sustainable, resilient, and prosperous Earth. Um, we cannot do without protection of information. Um, it is connected 
um, um, and it is extremely important to ensure that we take the right steps uh, to protect and manage the data that we all generate and, 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 and collect. Um, and at the same time, be an enabler um, to, to, to share this data, to use innovative technologies in a way to avoid it from becoming too disruptive. So there are many aspects in cybersecurity that, uh, that are making this very appealing. Um, so this is actually my, uh, mm -hmm. my contribution. Thank you, Renate. Athena, what about you? Yes, well, I could not agree more with uh, what Renate said. Uh, cybersecurity is indeed related to everything we do. And I would actually add that it is not just about the protection of the information or the information domain per se. It is foremost uh, about the protection of the people behind this information, their private life, their freedom, their dignity, um, their, their rights for an equal uh, life, for equal opportunities. So. Actually, this is what I find most appealing in my work, that we secure information to protect people through this uh, information. And uh, by doing that, we actually contribute to the fundamental individual rights on one hand, but also to very important societal values that are so much important in our democratic societies, especially even more than ever, I would say today. Could you um, give me a concrete example for the audience to to understand a little bit better, for example, Renate, what makes it exciting for you in your uh, daily work? Yes, um, for me it is uh, working with many parties, um, um, so working with member states, with industry, um, 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 consumers, with, with all kinds of stakeholders and the Commission and, and working together in this, um, um, uh, in this, in this field of cyber security on, on the aspects uh, to, to, to improve actually uh, the world that we live in. So it's a combination of a lot of parties that all have different interests and that come together to uh, together um, um, enhance um, uh, cyber security. That is, I think, uh, for me, an, uh, a true example of what is, is appealing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Athena? Well, for me, um, uh, what is really very interesting uh, is to, to try to find solutions, maybe technical or not so technical, that can enable us to make use of all this information, uh, uh, like Renata said, but at the same time while protecting uh, the, the people, as I mentioned before, behind this information. So be able to use it, but use it in the right way. And this is uh, really a very interesting topic for me uh, from a technical and not technical perspective, although it has also several challenges, obviously. Indeed. Indeed. Um, so have you faced any particular challenges um, with regards to, to your roles, um, uh, for example, with certification, Renate? Yes, yes. Um, we are currently, for example, developing uh, the cybersecurity certification framework, uh, which is aimed to enhance cybersecurity within Europe, covering actually all sectors. Um, and, and within this um, development, we of course work with all the uh, stakeholders, experts in the Commission and member states. Um, and we are developing um, uh, currently now the first cybersecurity certification schemes uh, that become part of this framework. Um, like, for example, um, a cybersecurity scheme on ICT products, on cloud services. And we just started with a scheme to build for cybersecurity in 5G. And many other areas in the future um, are likely to follow. Um, so within this framework, the te technologic, the economic, the societal, geopolitical, and even uh, diplomatic issues will, will mix. Um, so this is an, an ultimate and, an, and at the same time also real life challenge uh, to, to, to build this uh, framework. Um, so this is my example, but I'm very curious, uh, um, Athena, what your um, experience is. Well, um, a challenge that I see actually, and I have uh, faced myself also many times, especially in my life as DPO, in the area of privacy, uh, is that people do not always immediately understand the underlying reasons of the protection 
for privacy, for security sometimes as well. So uh, this makes it sometimes look like privacy or even security controls are um, like restricting or uh, uh, even bureaucratic in certain cases. Uh, and uh, I think that, of course, there is um, a lot to do here uh, on the erasing awareness uh, field. Uh, but also there's another very important dimension. This is the dimension of uh, smart design. So why why should it be that always the privacy and security option is the less appealing one, for instance? Uh, this is a choice, and I believe that there's a lot of work uh, to, 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 to be done here to, to change this perspective. Security and privacy should be easy, and people should be able to see immediately why they need it. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, I also believe, Athena, that uh, people are lacking awareness, uh, especially when it comes to data privacy. Uh, I would say that I heard a lot of people saying, um, and, and a lot of times people saying that they have done nothing wrong, so they have nothing to hide. So um, uh, people are not actually aware of the fact that data privacy is not about hiding, but it was, uh, it was never about hiding, but it's more about protecting uh, data from malicious use. Yes, absolutely. Um, mm. So, um, one more question I would like to ask. Uh, what studies are required for cybersecurity? What advice would you give uh, to women to get involved in this field? Uh, Renate, would you like to go first? Yes, of course. Uh, first of all, I think that, is, that it is regardless your background, protecting the environment you work and live in truly matters. Uh, so protecting information is actually everybody's responsibility, for no matter uh, what what angle um, you take. Um, so from from that side, uh, all studies matter in this in this respect. Not only cyber related uh, uh, courses or trainings or, um, or 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 real education programs. So important is I think that. Um, and that, that schools, studies and courses should provide uh, from, from, from each of their angle um, also um, a, a real interest in, um, in essential, um, 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 yeah, let's say, um, programs to, to preserve data and to anticipate, defend and respond continu and continuously improve the resilience of the information uh, that, that, that is generated uh, in our ecosystem. Um, and if you want to contribute more actively to information protection, um, the, you, of course, you may consider uh, to follow some courses um, um, or, or, or opt for a real study uh, related in that field um, or start to help others with the knowledge you have. So sharing knowledge is very important. Um, and of course, you could start in your own environment, make it start small. Um, with with uh, sharing or helping your family, friends, um, 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 yeah, of course, uh, uh, help your your colleagues at work. Um, so um, I think that from very different angles, people could step into the field of uh, of, of of protecting of information and cybersecurity. Um, um, mm -hmm. So that is basically uh, yeah the angle that I would like to uh, um, bring forward as advice for women. Thank you, Renate. Uh, Athena, your advice? Yes, well, I think um, there are different types of studies that can help someone get into cybersecurity. It depends a lot on the perspective that one wants to take. Uh, I personally studied with a classic, let's say, technical path, but I actually ended up dealing with uh, many legal aspects of cybersecurity, especially in the area of privacy in my daily work. The opposite may also happen when we see many legal experts uh, jumping into the technical side. Uh, and since I mentioned it, actually, the legal aspects of cybersecurity is a whole chapter in itself, actually. Like it is also the social dimension, psychological dimension, economic dimension of cybersecurity. So there, is, there are so many different ways to see it. So in fact, I would say cybersecurity is a truly interdisciplinary area and different backgrounds can fit. Uh, today, we also have so many possibilities on diverse types of studies, there are so many programs, so many different career paths that can be linked to this uh, greater field, let's say. So, I would say, as long as there is a passion and an interest to really learn and develop, just make the step and join the cybersecurity community. Thank you, Athenas.
So to sum up, uh, I would say that cybersecurity is an interdisciplinary field. If people with different backgrounds, mindset studies come together to work on cybersecurity, this can actually bring a lot of benefit in this field. So anyone can jump into this field, regardless of gender, education, age or background, as long as they have passion and interest to learn. At this point, I would like to thank you very much, Athena and Renate, for taking the time to participate in this Senisa podcast. I hope we will manage to influence more people and also more women to get involved with cybersecurity. I would like to wish you a great day and thank you so much for participating. Have thank a good you day. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.